everyone. So my name's Anjali and I am from eWater Pay um, and we are a British technology company um, that develops, installs and maintains sustainable water systems in sub-Saharan Africa. And so the benefits that we've seen of actually creating um, a community-owned water supply um, has really impacted uh, the rural communities a lot in terms of health. So we've seen that children are going to school with less uh, stomach aches, less diseases, less waterborne diseases. Um, it's meant that more people, more children can spend time in education. Even the women, they can actually start retraining themselves or getting involved in other skills that are not just water collection. We've actually been able to create jobs uh, for resellers. We've also been able to create jobs for engineers. So all of our uh, engineers in Gambia, we go out and train them on how to fix our taps, how to, to work on the electronics, replace the, the batteries, clean the solar panels. And most of them are women. They're the ones who are collecting the water. They're the ones who know how to look after their water supply network. And it increases the local economy. So we see that there's a population growth, but also there's a much better increased uh, agricultural space within these rural communities. So we closely align ourselves to the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and obviously, it's quite, you know, it's quite obvious that water is, is one of our uh, key focuses, so SDG 6. Um, but we also try to you know, make sure that when we are in these communities and we're engaging them, we're working on good health and well-being, so SDG 6. We're also um, working with solar power, which is uh, obviously affordable and clean energy, SDG 7. And then obviously climate action, we're helping with kind of reducing plastic um, and being quite kind of careful across our supply chain in terms of how we impact the environment. So this is one of our latest uh, taps. So I showed you um, one of our taps in Tanzania. Um, and this is our latest tap, which actually uh, has an LCD screen. So you can see how much, liter how much water is being dispensed um, inside of there. All of the data is connected uh, to the cloud. So we can track every single transaction, um, every single uh, liter that's dispensed from our tap, any faults. Um, or any issues with the tap, um, one of our engineers will actually be sent an SMS so that, that that engineer can go out and repair that tap within 24 hours. So this is one of our latest generation taps that will be coming out this year. So this is uh, one of our engineers, Sibu, in Gambia. And so the whole idea of our business model is that the revenue that comes uh, through the tap that is collected transparently is then being able to pay for people, the engineers, to actually go in and fix those taps. Um, so as I mentioned, all of our engineers are trained by us to go in and actually um, see what, what the problems are, investigate those issues, and then be able to, to get the, the taps up and running uh, within a matter of hours. And so that means that these rural communities actually have... Uh, a sustainable water supply. So we, as I mentioned, we collect a lot of data um, on our projects. Um, and so this is one of our, this is some of the data from one of our most successful projects, Jarang in the Gambia. So um, up here on the top left, um, so this project was installed less than 12 months ago. Um, and you can see the increase in people consuming water. Um, it's, it's one of those things where as soon as a community is engaged and they see the benefits of, of being able to have truly clean um, uh, sources of, of water that are available 24-7, um, the community really does get involved and they don't mind paying however little it is for a very standardized, um, at, a, at a standardized price, so everyone is fairly priced. Um, they don't mind paying for water and consuming it as long as it's clean. Because before, they would also still pay for water uh, with a tap attendant, um, and they wouldn't quite get the same service. Um, and I'll explain why in, in a moment. Um, up here on the top right, we've got availability. So we track the availability of all of our taps, um, and our, our own target is to have uh, over 95% availability of water. Um, to our communities, and so we're able to provide that uh, information. And what's most interesting is down here at the bottom, we've got this graph of um, average hourly water usage. So um, this is across, obviously, 24 hours. Um, 
Um, the way it used to work is there'd be someone who would sit or stand at a tap for eight hours a day, and um, that's when they'd unlock the tap and be able to sell water and collect cash for that. Um, unfortunately, that meant that if the tap attendant wasn't available, um, or they would just close uh, when they were operating the tap and dispensing water, um, people would only be able to collect water for eight hours a day. But with our system being able to automate that and to use our technology, um, we've actually been able to increase that to up to 19 hours a day. So you don't have to, well, the communities don't have to wait or rely on someone else. So those tap attendants have been retrained into either engineers or credit resellers um, who will then sell the credit and then um, sell them onto the community. So this is another graph, final graph. Um, and this is essentially showing, uh, this was done by WaterAid uh, March last year. And essentially, if everyone isn't aware of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the target is 2030. So essentially we have... 10, 10 years and maybe a couple of months left. Um, but at the current rate of progress with these unsustainable systems and with lots of donor aid money that, that just kind of implements these uh, systems that go, go into these uh, kind of rural communities and then they become dysfunctional after so many months because no one goes back there to train the communities to help them to look after themselves. Um, at the current rate of progress, we will achieve SDG 6, which is clean water, in 2066. That's not 10 years and uh, several months. Um, so we really do need to accelerate the funding into this sector. And it's even worse for um, safely managed sanitation. Um, so we really do need to accelerate the funding into this space and really go and help these communities actually fend for themselves and to, to create their own sustainable water systems. And so for if there's one thing that I leave you with, I think it's more, you know, if you're interested in being able to take part in a project like this and you would like to be able to um, kind of help some of these rural communities who have once been helped before by, by the charity sector um, but actually need to, to, to have a reliable, robust system, um, then please do reach out to me. Um, and we'd like to be involved in being able to, to repair another dysfunctional system that's out there in sub-Saharan Africa. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Uh, I have a very practical question. I've interested to know what happened uh, in the availability there's a like a dip in the gap in the graph uh, yeah what what kind of thing affects the availability yeah. the functionality so um we find lots of different kind of uh with the data that we've managed to collect there's quite some quite interesting things that we're able to identify um with that particular issue it's probably just that we've had a, an issue with spares or being able to get get out the right parts to replace the systems um there tends to be a lot of seasonality as well. So when there's lots of uh, rain, um, people will start kind of collecting water instead of using our taps. So there's lots of different kind of elements. Um, also, our technology is, over, the, over time, we've made it more and more robust because testing a tap like that here in the UK is very dis different to testing it in Africa, let alone testing it in three different countries which have sort of different climates. Um, so really, that, that's probably just an issue of, you know, whether it's getting, it's probably response times um, in terms of getting out there and, and training our team to actually be uh, onto it. Um, so there's been a lot of kind of learning over the last couple of years in terms of what works, how do you engage with those communities, um, as well as the engineers and training them on how to, how to keep these systems operating. Anything else? Um, how how much does it cost? How long does it take a community to kind of pay back the initial cost of installing the tap and yeah. the actual tap itself? So I probably forgot to say this at the at the beginning, but we do work with um, charities. We do work with uh, government organisations, and so a lot of those projects are funded by um, by them. So it could be DFID, it could be WaterAid, and they'll they'll fund some of these systems. But it, we're only seeing a shift at the moment where uh, these charities are wanting to invest in, 
sustainable systems as opposed to before where they install a pump or, or you know, a hand pump. Um, so now they're actually interested in, in systems that are actually uh, have the financial payment system within that. And this, this is fairly probably like the previous uh, uh, presentation. It's quite a... Um, the aid world is a little bit slower to adopt new technologies because they're less willing to take the risk on the people who actually are impacted. But we're seeing that with this particular new technology that, that uses a lot of different interesting uh, kind of uh, techniques um, actually is quite beneficial for the communities that we're in. Um, you mentioned before about engaging with the communities. Yeah. What how do you do that? How do you communicate with these communities about the change in the way that they yeah. operate and use water? So the way after um, we have a community engagement period after installing these taps. Um, so a lot of that is is working with them. But one of the key things to our success is that we don't just fly in, install and fly out. We actually get the community who use the water that's coming out of that tap to actually be the ones who are looking after that. So we kind of build the communities around and using with the people who are there. So training the, the children or, or on how to use the tags, how to top up credit, working with the, the, the women to, to retrain them into engineers, engineers. And I'm not saying that this is like degree level engineering. This is, this is kind of making sure that your water system is, is okay. Check the batteries. What's the date on the battery? Clean the solar panel. You know, the, the kind of basic um, kind of maintenance of the tap. Um, so in terms of engagement for us, it's very much kind of going back regularly. Um, and we tend to build up, you know, village technicians, level one technicians on the ground who are, as soon as they get an SMS, they're able to go and check on the taps in that village. So it's it's more that we, we build out the right people and the skill set within the communities before we leave or say that this is a sustainable system. And we're able to check with the data that we do see if something isn't, you know, we, we do see poor performing taps and we do see poor performing systems. And that allows us to identify, okay, we need to go back in and we need to retrain the engineers. We need to retrain the resellers and we need to understand what's going on. Whether it's, whether it's to do with community engagement or whether in some villages there's just a really poor supply of water. So it's, it's more, as I said, we don't fly in and fly out. Like, you know, we build the teams on the ground. It's, about, it's mainly about the human capital, um, yeah, for this type of impact. That's good. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yay.